Hello and welcome to this edition of Money in Motion video blog. This is Dan Perkins and thanks for watching. Well, November was dramatically different than December. December was an ugly month as I talked about earlier, but on the other hand, uh, for us, you know, uh, January was a terrific month. Not so much for the markets. In fact, this chart you're about to see will show that the the Dow Jones was off about 4% for the month and the S&P 500 was off around 3%. We, on the other hand, were up for the month. Uh, virtually all of my clients were up uh, in positive territory. So all of my clients beat the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrials for the month of January. So enough bragging, let's move on. Uh, what else happened in the month of January? Uh, as you can see by this chart, crude oil dropped another 10%. Uh, rallying today, this is being recorded on Tuesday, uh, February 3rd. Uh, I think it's in a trading range between 45 and 50. Uh, but I do believe before it's all said and done, uh, crude oil will try somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 35 dollars a barrel. I believe we have yet to see the full impact of the decline in the price of crude oil. For example, uh, the average price of imported crude oil for the month of November was just shy of 89 dollars uh, when crude oil was trading in the low 50s. Uh, now we had a trade for most of January in the 40s. Uh, my guess is that we're going to see another drop at the pump. Uh, we are approaching $2 a gallon on a national average, which means we have some more and some less. But I would expect that by the end of the spring that the national average might be as much as approaching uh, $1.80. I don't agree with the uh, Saudi uh, and the OPEC oil treasurer that we're going to go back to $70 to $80 a barrel by the springtime. There's just way too much supply of crude oil in the marketplace. Um, and it's there because of one reason. The supply of crude oil in the marketplace is because OPEC decided on Thanksgiving Day that they were not going to cut their production from 30 million barrels a day. <clears throat> I think they have told us afterwards that the reason why they're keeping production levels high and driving down the prices is they want to discourage American industry from expanding its oil production and natural gas and alternative energy sources. I want to spend a moment talking about volatility. Markets do go up like they did for a lot of 2013 and 14, and they do correct like they did in uh, October. The October decline was almost 10%. Then we had recovery in November and December, and then a sell-off, as I talked about earlier in this video, in January. Uh, volatility is going to be with us for probably a significant period of time. Uh, the Federal Reserve is being rumored to want to raise interest rates in June. I think that's not possible because they haven't even begun to address or discuss the possibility that we are in a deflationary spiral, driven by the decline in energy prices. And as the decline in energy prices works its way through the economy, we will see other, sac other factors influencing the Fed. Cost of gasoline, diesel fuel, plastics, chemicals, furniture, carpeting, appliances, on and on and on. The Fed is going to have to be about worried about deflation, not inflation, and raising interest rates. So I think the Fed is on hold for a significant period of time. The dollar, on the other hand, is king at the moment. It's up against every major currency, some of them scarily so. For example, the Russian ruble, the dollar is up almost 100% over the last year. The European Union euro is about 113, I think, headed to probably par by late spring, early summer. The pound is about 50, 150, excuse me, and, and down from about uh, 202. Um, thinks it probably could go to maybe, uh, if it breaks 150, maybe 135, 140. Canadian dollars at 125, 126. Very significant decline in the value of the Canadian currency. So what's going on is increased volatility as governments around the world try and figure out how to stimulate their economies by lowering interest rates. Lowering interest rates puts pressure on the currency and the American dollar seems to be king again. Uh, so I expect to see volatility. Some months we'll see good statements like we did in January. Other months we might see some down statements. 
What's important is when the market does go down, how quickly does the stock or portfolio recover? The fact that we outperform the markets in, in January says we, we must be owning the right things. So I know it's very disconcerting to have all this volatility, but it's a fact of life and it's going to be a fact of life for some period of time. I'll do my best to make sure I can dampen it from a portfolio standpoint as much as I can. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. And if you have questions, please feel free to give me a call or send me an email. And if you've got friends who are looking for a real manager, this is Dan Perkins. Thanks.